Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the D programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to continue discussing generic programming. I'm going to be talking about template blocks just to show you how flexible things can be in the D programming language. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in on the D programming language website here. And let's go ahead to the language reference here at the top here. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to templates. And let's go ahead and move this over to the side here. And I'm going to basically just scroll down here to the template declarations. And we can see an example of a template here. So just dissecting this piece here, you'll observe that it doesn't say anything about structs or functions or classes or anything that you might have seen in other languages. And if you're just looking at this for the first time, a template is just a placeholder or a blueprint of our code here. T is the name or the type here that we're going to be using to declare this template. And the capital T here is the first of however many we want template arguments here. And that T will get substituted anywhere you see the capital T within this block of code or these curly braces. So that's the basic idea. So for whatever types you use, whether you make T, this capital T an integer, float, or whatever, that's going to get substituted in this block of code here. So that's the basic idea. Let's go ahead and scroll down. And we'll go ahead and see an example of this uh, instantiation for us. And you can see again, we use the type here one time, and that's the code that'll be generated. So let's go ahead and play around with this just a little bit here. So template, I'm just going to call this a generic block of code here, T. And I'll go ahead and put uh, a T here. And this is just going to be some global variable here, OK? Uh, because again, what this placeholder is going to be is effectively generating some global variable here uh, in this scope here before our main. So let's go ahead and try to use it here. So I'll go ahead and put our block here. Let's create an int. And let's go ahead and access that global variable here, dot global, and set it equal to 7. And then we'll write out the uh, value here of that global variable here. Now, how to access it? Let's see, block int global. Let's go ahead and try that out here. So if I go ahead and run this, I have a value of 7. So this is kind of interesting here uh, that we've been able to generate this code. And what's the point here? Well. I mean, at first glance here, looking at this, it's like, well, I've just made things a lot more complicated. I've basically got to instantiate a template here for a integer variable here. And I've got to you know, type out all this syntax here when I could have just created a global variable. But we want to add a little bit more power here. So for instance, let's go ahead and say we want to do something with this global variable. Like, let's go ahead and abstract this and just say print uh, global int here, OK? And what this function is going to take here is, well, no arguments itself. And I'll just go ahead and write out here uh, the global variable. Global is, and let's just go ahead and write out global. And let's go ahead and make sure that this compiles here. Still compiles and runs. Now let's go ahead and make sure that we can use it here. So again, block the int. And I'll call the print global int function here. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more room here. And I can run it, and it'll execute here. So this is kind of an interesting just piece of code here. And again, if I go ahead and let's go ahead and rewrite this, uh, for instance, um, what you'll observe is I can only instantiate one of these integers here. Because again, it's doing this only once for the type here. So let's go ahead and do this for the float. I'll set it to 3.0. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this here. And I'll go ahead and copy this line. And we'll go ahead and see for the float here, I have the print global function. And we'll have the version that prints out 3 and 7. Now we should probably rename this. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just rename this. Uh, just print global here. That's a little bit better of a name here, since we could do any type here. And what D is effectively doing here with this template block here is, again, creating two global variables. And again, I could just copy this code here. Let's go ahead and paste it here. And I'm going to paste it again here. Replacing one is going to be an int global. One's going to be a float. Uh, but it does have the scope here of being part of this uh, block here template, OK? So that way, I'm able to instantiate the different uh, versions here. And we could see that our global is 7 and for 3 here, OK? Uh, so again, I could come here, and this would be the print global for the uh, float version and the print global for the int version, OK? Just a little pseudocode here. Uh, so that's the idea here. This would be like the block.global block 
float.global, and this would generate the block int.global. Okay, so that's the idea here. So let me go ahead and get rid of this here, because uh, it's a little bit distracting. Uh, but this idea that I could just create this sort of generic template block and then put either a family of functions here that is generated uh, is actually quite nice, especially if you've worked with writing just free functions for different math types and these sorts of things, it could come really in handy. And as noted in the D examples here, you'll often see alias, which is just another way to refer to something. And that could be a really handy way for us to, for instance, let's just go ahead and write an alias called uh, int block here. And we could just set that equal to the instantiation for integers. We could have one for floats. And we'll just call that the float block. And then I could just do uh, here, let's just go ahead and do a substitution. Or actually, I'll just type it out here with the int block global. And then I'll do the uh, int block print global. And the float block global as well. So that we don't have to type out all those things here. But we still get our generic program in the sense that I can generate code for all these different types and functions as I need. Now, of course, there comes the question of, do I need different versions of print global? Should I be generating this over and over again? Because as I showed you earlier, this is effectively just a copy and paste. So you do have to think about sometimes if I want to be able to move this out, for instance, and if I truly need individual versions of this function, or could I just write something that's a little bit more generic and be a free function on its own? That's sort of your decision. Sometimes it's nice to put in the block because then you get the specific templated uh, information and you know exactly which version is being called. So again, just something to consider. So in practice, you probably wouldn't use this particular uh, pattern, for instance, to instantiate global variables. But this is just a very powerful tool that you have. So for instance, if you wanted to just come in your main and write uh, a template for um, you know, some block here, uh, let's just call it block two or something uh, with a type here. And let's actually just use write line uh, type ID, uh, something like this. Uh, and then this should, oops, let's see if we could get this to actually uh, compile here. Uh, what we could do is actually just wrap this in a local uh, function. Oops, let's go ahead and just write a uh, function like this. Uh, and then again, we have this, you know, generic piece of code here where I could generate a bunch of different local functions in main of some particular type here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and do this here. So let's do block two, uh, the type int here, and then we'll call function. Uh, it doesn't take any arguments here, uh, but it should write out int here for the type and maybe we want a local version of that function here uh, called float that could do things uh, locally so again we get a lot of power here with this code or these sort of template blocks if i want to do things like put functions here uh, again as we're going to learn about i could go ahead and also create a struct here uh, let's go ahead and create data here t data for instance uh, and let's just go ahead and I don't know, maybe we will create a uh, data structure here. Let's also make this templated. And let's go ahead and create, uh, let me just, just for clarity here, my struct, my struct uh, s, and then I'll just write out s dot data here. Okay. Uh, whoops, let's see. Here, let me go ahead and clean that up uh, because my struct. Uh, is templated here. I need to assign some type here. Uh, again, let's just make it an integer here. Uh, or actually, let's make the uh, the type based off of the uh, type that is passed in that'll be used in the function here. Uh, and that should do the, the trick here. Uh, let me expand this out because this one got a little bit wild here. Uh, but again, a lot of power here. I'm just declaring this locally here, this template block here, where I have a structure Again, the type's going to match whatever the block is here. Then I can create this struct for. And then I can instantiate a struct within a free function here. And then just write out the data here, uh, which it infers whatever the type is. So for int or float and the default values here, uh, which is just going to write out int when I call this uh, function value here uh, for the type and a zero uh, when I write out the data value. And then when I instantiate the block version of this for float for block two, 
I get a float and the default value, always something that catches people a little bit off guard is not a number here. Again, so we should uh, set that type there for floats, but that's the basic idea. So anyways, what I wanted to show you in this uh, lesson here as before we go into the specifics of functions and classes and structs is that we have this more generic way to just create blocks of code here uh, that again is a little bit more powerful and if you find yourself writing structs and then free functions that work with those structs of a particular version you have that ability and this can also be as flexible as if you have global variables or other free functions that you want to make templates you can make them all match up on the type without you know having to worry about any mistakes and making sure that they work together and you can have all the unit tests and stuff work together so it's a really nice uh, tool that we have available in the deprogramming language that just pushes things a little bit further than other languages um, and this is really just scratching the surface here for instance you could create an alias of these based off of a sequence of aliases so there's all sorts of power of how you want to instantiate uh, and set these things up so anyways folks i'll go ahead and leave you there if you're following along on my series bring up my website here you can find the d course here it's free to follow along if you're tracking your progress especially as we're diving into all these template lessons so use that if it's helpful and otherwise let me know your thoughts on this lesson if you know about some other cool stuff that you could do with templates and just making generic code in the deprogramming language. I'd be happy to learn about those below. And as always, folks, thank you again for your time and attention.